Uh, this is my first ever Zoom. <laughs> oh, wow. Cool. So I'm, I'm honoured. <laughs> no, I think we're all still learning, to be honest. <laughs> Very new to me as well. So. Okay. Uh, I'm in the car because uh, it's the only place I could get an escape. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing anyway? I'm all right. Nice how things. are you? Not too bad. I've been uh, listening to the new album lots because I had a stream sent to me the other day and it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Uh, love the production on it. So, so nice. Thank you. But um, yeah, before I speak to you about the album, tell us about what life's like out there at the moment and where you are in comparison to yeah. our, well, like, our rules at the moment. Right now, um, they've, we're in Georgia, so um, they, 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 were the, I think they were the first state to loosen up the law hmm. and um you know they opened up hairdressers and tattoo parlors and stuff like that <laughs> it's very odd i was thinking why don't they just open like gap or something like that <laughs> First, why does it have to be a tattoo parlor? Yeah. I don't know. No um, idea. but yeah it's a, it's okay it's just like it, most people was still staying in, even though there was, um, you know, they were letting people out, you know, people were staying in, they weren't really trusting the governor. Mm. Um, so people are starting to go out now. I went out, I've been out to a restaurant a couple of times and, you know, you just put your mask on and they have restrictions on how many people can go in. You try and sit on the patio and stuff like that. Hmm. But it feels nice to just get a little bit of normal, you know? Yeah. We're starting to get that here. I think they're, they're loosening it slightly. But um, are they? So I think people are just a bit fed up now. I think some people are just making up their own rules at this point. But, I know. Well, um, everyone's been really good in England, you know, just been really, you know, you know obeying the rules really well. Yeah. Here it's kind of... You just don't know from state to state everyone everything's different hmm. but yeah moving on to music anyway which is the, the main focus of this I, i've been a fan of yours for a long long time so it's, it's nice to have oh, an excuse thank you. as a as a country journalist it's quite nice to have an excuse <laughs> to chat with you yeah the album so we've got nashville tears coming out august 14th um like i say the production on it's gorgeous so tell us about that whole project and, and how inspiring it was for you to be out in nashville and working amongst that community yeah, it was the first time um, I'd worked with Nashville musicians. Um, and it was important that we use Nashville musicians. We recorded it in Nashville. We used the Nashville string day, string uh, players and um, a Nashville-based producer and everything else. So it was just a, a brilliant project to do. It was just so much fun. We had a ball we had a blast doing it it's one of the greatest i would put it down as one of the greatest times i've ever had in my life making a record um fred is a great guy he's so funny he he's got a big presence as a producer so it was very joyful and fun to be around him and and he brought in great great musicians that he works with on a regular basis and they were just mind-blowingly good, you know? Mm. And they also loved Hugh Presswood and were ex they were excited about the project, you know? Um, and it was different to what they normally do in the studio. So they were, you know, they were excited to do it. Mm. Um, it was just brilliant. It was just a special, special time. Um, the whole project started because I said to Fred one day in passing, you know, I really would love to do an album called, I think I had this idea for an album. It was going to be called Nashville Tears. And it would be, you know, songs by songwriters in Nashville that didn't get the credit they deserved or the songs got lost along the way. Because having been in this business now for some time, you realize how many ducks need to be in a row for a song to get out. So at any given point during that process, a song could get lost. In a way, it's quite miraculous how any song gets out to people. Mm -hmm. You know, with the right singer, the right song, the right production, the right time, the right radio, everything. So 
for every song that gets out and connects to people, there's probably 10 more that, do, that don't. And knowing how much talent there is in Nashville, I was just assuming there must be so many. Hmm. Now I'm still in, I still, even though we kind of, we started, so we started looking into that, but halfway through I got massively sidetracked with Hugh Presswood because he was so good and realized that I just wanted to do Hugh Presswood songs. Sorry, I'm just going to press a button there. Um, I just wanted to do Hugh Presswood songs. And because um, I looked into his, you know, Fred sent me Oklahoma Stray, I was so blown away by it. I just couldn't believe I hadn't heard of him. Um, I mean, I know that he's very well regarded and revered in Nashville and in you know, America and in you know music circles and everything. I thought, well, it's funny that I hadn't heard of him. And I hadn't even heard of um, the song Remembers When, which is the mm. most famous song. I hadn't even heard that. So, but I heard, you know, when I started digging into you, Presswood, that was, that, that song I heard later in the process, I'd heard a lot more other songs before I'd already just I'd already decided I was going to do a Hugh Presswood record before I heard, even heard the song remembers when so I was just really excited to find Hugh Presswood you know mm. I, I was just suddenly like I was lit up you know I was like I was amazed you know that he was this great songwriter that I'd never heard of and it was like finding gold for me as a singer. And it was just a suddenly, it just suddenly became a really exciting project. Mm. And I was really into it at that point and really enthused and excited. And I started digging into the catalog and riding around the car, walking around, just listening to it and just getting into the skin of this music and just loving it. Yeah. And then that whole process of, listening and putting together a collection that I wanted to do and and then you know whittling it down it was just brilliant yeah well, you just mentioned that you hadn't heard any of his stuff beforehand and I think that's going to be a case the case for a lot of people listening to this album including me I wasn't familiar with his material either so do you find any kind of or do you feel any kind of pressure doing this kind of album because these songs are going to be like introduced to a lot of people for the first time and they're going to hear your voice on it so is it an important thing for you to get it right Did you get some kind of responsibility i don't feel i don't feel pressure i feel responsibility to get it right um i felt more pressure with bacharach because bacharach is so well known hmm. you know and so well regarded around the world and so iconic and the and all these enormously great like huge iconic singers did Backrack songs, you know, like Dusty Springfield and um, Dion Warwick and Aretha Franklin. So that was actually more pressurizing. For this, I just wanted to do him justice and I wanted to take his de original demos and really present them in the best possible way. No, I was excited. I wasn't pressurized. I was excited. I was like, I want to share every with everybody what I found. And I want to create a really beautiful collection that will serve as an introduction to Hugh Presswood. You know, I know that a lot of people know who he is, but there are still a lot of people who don't. And if, if you don't know Hugh Presswood, I wanted this album to be a introduction to Hugh mm. Presswood. So I, want, I always want to do my best, you know, no matter what the project. So I really, yeah, I really wanted to do my best, but I didn't feel pressure. I just felt like, excited hmm. you know and it's it's such a diverse album as well i mean you've got like some real throwback sounds on there there's some heavier influences at times and lots of blues rhythms so was that your plan right from the outset to choose songs specifically that were going to show everything across the board yeah i think it's always a good idea when you're doing a record to have diversity of styles and sounds just just because just just because a record should have some you know, movement to it. And, um, and you know, when you're listening to hundreds of songs in someone's catalog, same with Backrack, the same experience I had with that, you know, you need to, you know, what I, that was back, Backrack was actually good for me, good training, because you, you pick some of the songs that people do know or that the bigger hits. 
and then you go deeper. Um, so people who are even our fans of Hugh Prestwood, and I'll be talking to a, a, a chap who is a very, you know, knows an awful lot about Hugh Presswood this afternoon. He, there'll be songs on the album he, he will not have heard. Um, so I did the same thing there. Yeah, I just wanted to, I've forgotten the question, I'm so sorry. No, it's just a, a, talking about it being a diverse album, was that your plan right from the outset yeah. to show that across, across the board? Definitely, always, yeah, just always, because there's different flavours, you know, different colours, different stories, different moods. I think it's really important, but I, I also think overall it's got a mood, mm. you know. I think the album does have a, a single mood, you know. I wasn't crossing too many genres. Hard Time for Lovers does stick out a bit. But, you know, I think that's the only one that sticks out in terms of style. But everything else has a mood. Mm. And uh, I was listening to Bristol Cohen Pine as well, which is obviously out there for everyone there, which if you pre-order the album, it's out there. And you got Lost Hollow on that as well. Um, yeah. And there you got those guys involved because they were very, really, well, really, really talented Americana acts in Nashville. Amazing. Amazing. Talk, to, talk about working with those guys. Well, Tommy was the drummer on the album anyway. I met him at the session. Hmm. And he's an Anglophile. You know, he loves England and he spent a lot of time in England. Um, you know, the whole family have. So we got chatting, you know, and he was telling us about his band and everything. So I, when I went back to the barn, so I was staying out in a barn, <laughs> I would listen to, um, you know, I listened to their stuff and I thought, wow, they sound so great and everything. And when it came down to putting backing vocals on the record I said to Fred I really want Tommy and Laurie to do I want them to do it you know some of the backing vocals and I just think they'd be really really good and anyway so in the end they did some backing vocals and then we made Bristle Cone Pine a feature and um, they just bring an awful lot to it the whole project they they're an important part of the sound Tommy was really my what they call in America my MVP you know my most valuable player <laughs> um, man of the match you know yeah. Tommy was my favorite and, and and that's really hard to say because they were all so amazingly good but my favorite musician by far was Tommy he was just brilliant he was so sensitive he can rock he can he can play a ballad he he can go heavy go hard go soft he was like he understood songs he understood lyrics i mean drummers like that are so rare and everything tommy did i loved i, I he did not play he didn't play anything wrong to my ear and it was just so wonderful i loved working with tommy hmm. and then i just love working and then i i loved meeting laurie and i just i just think they're awesome i just think they're awesome um couple i think and i love their music and i love their energy and i'm excited about them you know being a part of this project yeah. and moving forward with your own music in the future now having had that experience in nashville and having worked with all these incredible musicians on something which is very different for you do you feel like it's going to influence your own writing and your own music moving forward on future i think stuff? it always does i think it always does i mean you know, every, you know, I've, I've grown so much in the last, I don't know how many years I've, I've learned so much. I mean, just because I haven't been putting stuff out necessarily in a normal music business cycle, I've been doing stuff at home. I've been learning how to produce. I've been editing, doing side projects, you know, um, I've been doing other things like little other, you know, other projects that have been kind of making me um, grow as a musician and everything else so i'll be in i'll be interested to see what comes out in the next you know album that i write you know but for me my process was really weird you now my writing process is really weird it's like there's no rhyme or reason to it there's some skill and struck you know there's some songwriting skill of course but, but a lot of it is just pure inspiration and just channeling and um you know plucking you know things out of the air so because i had a child and i was like just so 
uh, on earth I was just so in the, the here and now and in a physical plane being a parent I just didn't have the luxury of drifting off you know what I mean I, I just couldn't you know it's, it's actually not responsible to do that so I've I made a choice to just focus on the task at hand which was my child's early years and just making sure that he was growing and developing and everything else and happy and secure and content and that was really my priority and you know so I'm deaf but I now he's three and towards the end of this record I feel like I can definitely get back to a place where I can maybe trust myself to to just allow myself to start channeling again you know and you've got this UK tour that's supposed to be coming up next year and now fingers crossed the world's going to be back yeah. to normal by that point but um how much are you looking forward to experimenting with these Nashville songs live? Because uh, they're going to sound incredible with, a, with your full band. Well, members. they're going to sound incredible, hopefully, if Tommy and Laurie can come. You know, part of the reason I wanted to, I was excited about it. And it was, you know, because Tommy and Laurie were coming. Um, and, you know, Tommy especially, you know, was the big part of that sound. So I hope they can come March 2, 2021. I really do. Um, but yeah, that's going to be really cool. That's going to be really cool to do something a bit different. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to do some songs from Seasons and I'll do some other songs and bits and bobs. Um, but, you know, I initially wrote all the songs from Seasons on the guitar. I was, for years, I was the girl with the guitar doing that kind of folk Americana thing. Mm. You know, it kind of evolved into this sort of jazz sound because I wasn't getting anywhere in the music business and I was trying to record them every which way to see how I could get my record out, you know? And I like jazz, you know, my, my default setting is jazz. So I like all types of music, honestly, I really do. I mean, I, could, I like, and I enjoy singing all types of music, but this is a, this is, this, this, the show will be fun because it will be guitar focused and, um, you know, that Americana feel, um, you know, but still smooth and still, you know, pleasant, still easy on the ear and all the rest of it. Yeah. Well, fingers crossed we can make that work <laughs> next year when all this yeah. madness is over. But um, I'm going to let you go. But thank you so much for doing this today. We appreciate your time and um, best of luck with the album because it deserves oh, massive, you. massive success. Seriously. Thank you. I really, I, I, I love it. I, I really do. I'm really proud of it. I mean, we definitely, um, I think we just honestly, and I hate to say it, it sounds really, it doesn't sound big headed, it doesn't sound big headed, but I really feel like we nailed it. Like, I really you think, did. like, we nailed this. <laughs> you did. You really are, and everyone, there were so many people on it, so many people on it, and everyone was brilliant. Yeah, well, I hope it brings you the, the success it deserves. And uh, Thank you know, I'll you. hopefully catch up with you when you're back in the UK next year for the tour. Yeah, I'll be be, nice. no, I'll be here. I'll be in the UK next month. I'm, I'm about to book flights. Okay, cool. We'll yeah. hopefully we can we'll work something out at some yeah. point. But, uh, nice to chat to you, and, and I'll, you. I'll let you carry on. All Thank right, I'll speak you. to you later. Bye. Bye.